So next we have Ms. Dashni Santanam, Development Manager of SMB Sales for Southeast Asia at Google Asia Pacific, who will give us some good advice on how businesses, especially small and medium-sized firms, can grow themselves by using Google's tools and advertising platforms to reach relevant audiences while maintaining a high returns on investment. Ms. Santanam, please. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this afternoon. You're starting to look a little bit tired. I know it's the afternoon, it's after lunch, so maybe just move around a little bit in your seat, stretch your neck a little bit. Yeah. I'm only going to ask for another 25 minutes of your time, all right? So it's not going to be very demanding. And I'm going to keep it very, very simple. So today I'm going to talk to you about three different ways in which Google can help you make the web work for you and your business, all right? So quick introduction about myself. My name is Darshini. Uh, I've been with Google in three different geographies for eight years now, so it's been a while. Um, but what's been common for me this entire time has been that I have worked with SMBs. Um, so I feel your pain. I've been feeling your pain for the last eight years, and I'm happy to help um, find solutions for your problems later on when we network um, as well. But today, when I talk to you about AdWords, I'm going to talk to you about how it can help SMBs and businesses like your own. But what is AdWords? It can be scary, I admit. It's scary for me, and I've been doing it for eight years. Every time I log into the account, there's a change, there's a new feature, it starts to get a bit overwhelming, right? I'll admit that. But you can simplify it for yourself. It is technology, and technology is here to make your life easier. So AdWords, very simply putting it, is all these different ads that you see when you're browsing the web. All right? It may be when you're searching. It may be when you're doing image searches. Maybe when you're on YouTube, when you're reading the news, when you're on your phone. These are all the different ads that you see that crop up. For you as a business, it means you could be showing up when people are on all these different places on the web. AdWords is search. First and foremost, it's all about search. So this is the anatomy of a regular search results page, right? So this is a um, query that I ran a couple of weeks ago for the keyword custom made suit in Singapore. And this is the kind of results you would see. First thing I notice is that there is one ad on top. Unfortunately, it's not very clear on this screen, but you may have noticed that it comes up in a yellowed background. And then there are a couple of ads on the side. But to quickly point out, that was the search query. This is the speed, roughly less than half a second at which results came up. And these are the organic natural search results. However, everything else that you see on top and on the side are what we call the AdWords ads. If you notice the kind of results that have come up, the AdWords ads are actually more likely to be useful for me if I wanted to get a suit made than some of the natural results here. And we're finding this to be true for a lot of SMB-run businesses, for a lot of very local businesses that can be useful for very niche search queries. So these are the AdWords ads. We show a maximum of about 11 ads on a given page uh, and a maximum of three on top at any point in time. I must admit, this is a bit unusual for Singapore. We don't always fill out all the slots on a given page, which then for you means that it becomes an opportunity to show up before your competition starts to list themselves. The key difference between the green box and the red boxes, the green box are your natural results, which means that they're untouched by human hand, which means you optimize your websites and they'll come up on top. But the red boxes, you will have a lot more control. This is where you can spend a little bit of money to have very wide reach. Apart from being just search, AdWords is also display. That is, once people have searched and moved on to a site and are browsing the web, reading the news, watching a video, ads can show up. People are at different points in the buying cycle when they're searching versus when they're browsing. Right? When people are looking for reviews and reading reviews of a movie or of a restaurant, they're still trying to decide whether or not they're willing to put in 
$10, $20 towards that activity. However, when they're actually searching to book tickets, you know for a fact they've decided they're going to spend that money. So there are different stages, and you can use AdWords to appeal to audiences at different stages of the buying cycle. And if at any point you're able to catch an undecided member, you can quickly convert them to a customer. So the ad I'm showing you here is of Property Guru. Um, and it's an ad for an application that they run on a relevant site. Now, you can choose to target sites um, directly. You can say, I want to show up on Straits Times. I want to show up on this list of sites. Or you can say, show my sites to anywhere on the web where it will be relevant for me. Especially if you have dynamic content, this can be really useful because if suddenly new blogs are talking about the products that you offer, your ads will now show up. And you as a business owner, you as a marketer, won't have to keep tab of every place of the web where you're likely to receive relevant traffic. Technology will do that for you. And you can choose to do a combination of both as well. To say, show me on sites that talk about coffee and coffee shops in Singapore, but also specifically show me on these 10 sites. So it allows you to tailor make the audience you wish to reach. So let's get to it. What makes the web work for you? Or how can you make the web work for you, right? I like to think of this in three very simple ways, right? Reach, relevancy, and ROI. You can remember this as the three R's of Google AdWords. Let's start with reach. When I talk about reach, I'm talking about all the people that you can acquire and turn into potential customers. And luckily for us in Singapore, like Michelle mentioned earlier as well, we have a very high rate of internet penetration, and we have a very high rate of mobile phone usage. So most people, island-wide, have access to the internet which means that you have no excuses for not being available when they're looking for you. Google has close to 90% of search market share, close to 95% of mobile search share, irrespective of devices. And as we know, majority of searches are now done on mobile rather than desktop. So when people are on the go, when people are in your location, you can reach them. 90.4% of display market share. Again, we are very lucky in Singapore to have such high figures. A lot of countries don't enjoy this amount of penetration. So it is time that you cashed in on the audience that's already available and waiting in the room for you to pitch to them. Oops. And finally, 87.2% of the population that has online also, uh, sorry, that is online also has access to disposable income which means they can spend on whatever it is that you have to offer. So it's not a useless audience you'll be reaching. It's a very targeted audience, an audience that will put their money where their mouth is. All right? So when I talk about reach, of course, it's very nice to say, oh, great, so we can reach the entire island sitting in my living room. I can get this done. But is that always relevant? Not necessarily. Right? So reach can be across geographies, reach can be across networks, reach can be across different products. At Google, Google also displays ads on other Google products. You may have noticed ads on Gmail, you may have noticed ads on Maps, etc. Other Google properties also display your ads. And Google is a leader in many of these markets as well, going to say that even when people are doing other activities, you have reach. But coming back to address the question of, is so much reach always necessarily a good thing? Maybe not. How I like to think of reach is as being extremely wide, but selectively deep. You should have the ability to reach everyone. But you should be also be able to choose the right people within that larger group that you want to target. And once you've decided who you want to target, you need to be able to identify the right message for the right group. And that can be done through two very simple ways. First, geographic targeting, and the second, language targeting. When we talk about geographic targeting, essentially it allows you to customize the regions you want to display your ads to. 
So you can mark out specific portions of the country and say you will only service this region. So if, for example, you have a delivery service that only delivers within 15 kilometer radius, you can mark that down. If you only want to show your ads in the east or only in the west, you can mark that as well. You can also then filter out by language. If you know that your product will cater to a certain ethnicity alone, you can then target only people who have chosen to use, for example, Google with the Chinese language, or Google with the Malay language, or Google with the Tamil language. So you can choose to target each ethnicity if you wanted to, and if you thought that your product would benefit from targeting that group. And remember, when you're targeting a group, you can customize your message to drive action even further. The second one, relevancy. Relevancy is of key importance to us. We strongly believe that we won't be in business if we're not relevant. At the end of the day, the core of what we do is search. And search is founded in relevancy and useful information. Even our advertising model is based on the same principles. Relevancy is of key importance. And some of you may have heard of quality score. Quality score is nothing but a slightly more technical term for relevancy. All right? When we talk about relevancy with respect to ads, we take into account a lot of different factors on your end, on the end of your own accounts, and match it to what the user is looking for in order to identify if it's actually a relevant case. So if the user is looking for bag repair, but you sell bags online, it's a match, but not a perfect match. It's still within the same sphere, right? You may have some information on your site about how to repair bags, but maybe you don't offer bag repair services. It's an okay match. I would give it maybe three stars out of five. But if there were an advertiser who were actually offering bag repair services, they'd score higher. It's all relative to the same user. And then if there were a bag repair service who were located in the exact same region and speaking the same language as the user, they'd score even higher. So do you start to see how it's not just relevancy, broadly speaking, but it's also graded further. So the more relevant you are, the more you're likely to succeed. And we take into account many different factors when we talk about relevancy. So just to give you an idea and to kind of break down the myth of what is this intangible subject, some of the factors we look at are the landing page quality. That is, once the user has actually clicked through on your ad and come to your site, do they have a decent experience? Or are they going to end up installing some malware into their systems? Or is the page a complete mess and can they not read what's going on? So one is landing page quality. Another one is account history. In the past, have you managed your accounts poorly? And it's very, very hard to manage your accounts poorly because it's a very easy tool to use, right? If you manage your accounts poorly in the past, you may suffer or your accounts may perform more slowly at this point because their relevancy score will be lower. However, if your accounts have performed reasonably well in the past, your account history will be strong, as will be your historical CTR. Now, CTR stands for click-through rate. That is, the number of people who see the ad, the number of people who click on it. It's a ratio, all right? Relevancy of keywords to ads. Going back to the same example of bag repair and someone selling bags versus bag repair and someone offering bag repair. There's a much closer match in the second scenario. Then, also contributing to quality score, is relevance of keyword and ad to the search query. The ad text itself, what is the message you're sending out? Now, this is a little bit still intangible, right? What does this mean for you as a marketer? It means pick the right keywords. Prioritize the right keywords. Say that if these are the services I offer, these, are, these will be my core keywords. And then I'll have a few additional extra keywords that I'll play, play around with and see if they work for me or not. Number one, pick the right keywords. Number two, associate the right keywords with the right message. 
think of it from the user's perspective, right? If you were searching for information about whatever product you offer, what do you want to see? What will attract you to click on it? So pick the right keywords, write the perfect message for each of those keywords. That is, write three lines of ad text. If you have a discount, put it in the ad text. If you have a call center number they can use, put it in the ad text. Once you define that, set up a URL to which you want to direct your people. This URL could go to a business page, it may go to a Facebook page if you have one, it may go to your fully designed websites. It's entirely up to you. And choose how you want to target your ads or how you want to change your messages based on which device people are accessing your ads from. If people are on the go on their phones, it's 6 p.m. and they're looking for places to eat out at for dinner, your message can be different than if they are looking for weekend brunch plans on a Wednesday. All of this, if done right, will contribute to a strong quality score, which in turn stands for how relevant you will be for your potential customers. And the reason we do this, just to give you some background, is to make sure that we maintain complete equilibrium. We are here in the business of connecting users and advertisers. Users are going to stop coming to us if we don't have relevant information. Advertisers like yourselves will also stop coming to us if we don't give you relevant users. So because we want to maintain a healthy ecosystem and continue towards our journey of making useful information accessible, we have tailored this into the advertising model as well. So advertising isn't just big and flashy, it's highly relevant and very useful, very actionable. One more bit about being relevant you get rewarded. The more relevant you are, the more rewards you will reap. Without going into too many details, right? Ads get ranked, ads get ranked both based on how much you're willing to bid for the keyword, maybe $1, maybe 50 cents, it may be $3, and how relevant your keyword is. If your keyword is completely irrelevant, your score will be very low, and irrespective of how much money you're willing to bend, uh, how much will, money you're willing to spend, together when you multiply the two, your rank will be poor and your ads will not be able to perform. However, flip it around. If you have a very relevant product, you may not need to spend that much more in order to gain a higher ad rank. All right? So quality score and, and being relevant can reward you in huge ways. A strong quality score can increase your ad rank significantly. At the same time, reduce your actual costs. So when you set a bid with AdWords, you set the maximum amount you're willing to spend. That $1, or the $3, or the 50 cents is the max you are willing to spend. More often than not, you will get charged much less. You may get charged only about 80 cents, 85 cents. It'll vary. But more often than not, you'll be able to stretch your own budget because of the discounts you'll constantly receive for being more relevant. Oftentimes, we find that advertisers who are in position one actually end up paying much, much less in reality compared to advertisers in positions two, three, and four. And this is purely because they're relevant. So there's reach, there's relevance, and then there's ROI. When I talk about ROI, I talk about being able to Spend very little, but get a lot from that same amount. So the AdWords program supports advertisers of all size budgets. You set a budget depending on what you're comfortable spending. If it starts with $10 a day, that is fine. You will still only show when you're more likely to receive traffic, and you can optimize your account to make sure that you will only receive relevant traffic. You will identify the most effective and affordable keywords. The ball is in your court. You decide, do you want to show up on all the popular keywords and not be relevant, or do you want to show up on all the relevant keywords and be very efficient with those little bits of information? Ads don't need to be shown all the time to still be effective. Very, very important. You don't need 100% coverage in order for your business to run successfully. What's important is that ads show at the right times to the right people with the right message. 
your ad can regularly receive a report showing how your money was spent. So complete transparency on where every single cent is going. All right? So just to kind of illustrate how this may work, you may want to start with a $100 initial investment in AdWords, which is not much on a month-to-month -month basis. A $100 investment at roughly $1 per click is likely to give you at least 100 clicks, if not more. Right? If you're more relevant, you'll get even more clicks out of the same money. And assuming that you have a 10% conversion rate, that means 10 sales. If each of the sales were worth $50 to you, that's $500 worth in sales that you've got from just a $100 investment in advertising. And don't think of this as just advertising as much as driving traffic. Channeling traffic to your website, channeling traffic to your pages. Which then means that you can reinvest your profits back into AdWords. And we've seen this happen very successfully for a lot of SMB, SMBs across the region. Um, just last month, I came across a story of um, a Thai SMB who started out with $150 equivalent per month. Um, within the first 45 days, they found that they were able to grow their business so much that number one, they had to add more employees, which meant that obviously business was booming. Number two, they increased their budget 10x. They were able to fill out all their appointment slots. 100%. And they were able to manage it such that once it got full, they stopped advertising. So they had complete control over how much business they wanted to do, this rate at which they wanted to grow, and in which direction they wanted to take it. And they did that purely by reinvesting the profits from their previous round of advertising. The same thing here. All right? That's something that you can look at factoring into your own systems as well. As I mentioned, you can track every single click impression conversion. You can start out with keeping it very, very simple. How many people see the ad versus how many people click on the ad? And then you can make it very complex as well. How many people then came to the site? Which pages did they go to? You can use Google Analytics. You can use the reporting available within the AdWords platform itself. And this just gives you an idea of what it looks like. It comes up in a pretty graph. So one look at it, and you'll know where your account stands at. You can even set up these graphs to come to your inbox. So every morning when you wake up, instead of checking Facebook, you could set up an alert to come to your inbox to say, this is where your account's at. This is the amount of business you've received through AdWords yesterday or in the last week. I wanted to share with you another case study of a small business owner in the US. Of course, the scale of small businesses in the US can often be a bit bigger than what we may see here. That said, it's still a small business. She was the owner. She had one outlet. Um, she started out with just one dog daycare center. And today, she's grown to having multiple outlets across the region. Here's the story. into my warehouse at 7 o'clock in the morning and I realized I was alone. And I would really wait for clients to come in. I figured if I build it, they would come. So when it first started, I came down here and returned her dogs after dog walks and she had all this space and there were like five dogs in this big warehouse. I'm going, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out. So at the moment when I was standing in the warehouse with no dogs, I realized that I needed to find ways to market myself. So I sat on my computer and I found Google AdWords. 
keyword process was relatively easy even for a non-techie like me. Uh, I knew that I just had to do dog-related keywords. So dog boarding, dog, dog walking, anything related to dog or the dog business was going to be my, my the keywords that I would enter in. When I first started advertising through Google AdWords, I did a very broad uh, advertising campaign and I just wanted to pull in clients and I wanted to see where they would come from. We were pulling in so many clients from areas outside of the East Bay that I had to bring down my search. So what I did through Google AdWords is I just went in and targeted the East Bay. I'm an animal lover. My passion is dogs. I never in my wildest dreams ever imagined myself owning a business with 30 plus employees, with 120 plus dogs a day, and thinking of opening more facilities. The doors are packed with dog noses waiting to get in and out of Happy Home. AdWords helped me grow so quickly here. I know that when I expand, I know this with confidence, that AdWords will also help me fill my next facilities. Life is great. Life is awesome. Am I turning red? <laughs>